In the comments a few weeks ago, I was asked to solo looking for Regina. Since this is in line with the content I do, I decided I may as well return to looking for Raid BFA and attempt to do so. This took a while mostly because I got hit by Prime Disappointment within my vault each week forcing me to get stuck on Stormwall for quite some time. As for the DPS and HPS requirements, those aren't going to be said this time but the numbers are on the screen for what I was doing. As for my gear, I was 241 eye level with a 252 weapon. Legendaries used are Convoke for Tinkerer and Jaina, and Jolt for Stormwall because the Voke legendary does not work out timing wise for Stormwall. Now then, onto the fight. Starting with High Tinkerer Megatork. To start off, this fight requires you to have more burst damage than steady damage, is somewhat caster unfriendly because of all the movement involved during this fight. But if you have mass AoE CC such as mass entanglement, this fight will require much less movement. As for the healing required here, it depends on how fast you kill him. The more DPS you do, the less damage you'll be taking. First and foremost, start the fight, blow all of your CDs. He needs to die as fast as possible because that healing requirement just shoots up through the roof the longer it goes. You also use your CDs starting at the very beginning because you will not be shrunk right away. So you don't have to worry about the 99% damage reduction happening during your CDs for that first couple of seconds. While fighting him, he will spawn spike bots. These will follow you around at a slow speed and can be CC'd. This is generally why you have to keep moving because the circle pass around them stuns you for 3 seconds and it can chain into you until you die. Otherwise, the spike bots will only just be spamming spike volley at you, which deals 787 damage each time per bot. So this is where the most of the damage from the fight comes up. I went over Shunk a little bit, but when you are Shunk, you deal 99% less damage. If you jump into a spike bot to try and destroy them, the fight will immediately end and you have to restart it. So do not touch the bots and during this time you may want to kite the boss just to reduce the damage you're taking. As for heavy thrusters, this is the brown circle AoEs that deal a decent amount of damage that he does on the ground. Try to avoid them unless you have the healing to just get hit by them. During the intermission phase, stay away from the sheep on the ground and avoid the spire that fawns out of them. That is all there is to this fight. The hardest part is probably surviving the lower your DPS is here. On to Stormwall Blockade. First off, Lemonaria is immune to all damage while both mini bosses are up so you sadly cannot just dive into the water out here the water damage and kill it that said since we cannot cheese it i will go over the boat mechanics starting with the boat on the left this is pretty simple drop off the lightning anywhere you are not standing it will silence you when you are hit by the boss so in other words if you see it on you go to a corner drop it off move away the beams here do almost no damage, but I think they still silence you. So if you're a caster, avoid the beams. If you're melee, who cares? Uh, same with the lightning boss. It doesn't stop melee other than death knights. On the other hand, we have the right boat. This is the main one to worry about because when you hear the voice line, her song shall spell your doom. This is a warning that a harpy will be spawning. It is going to chime you off the boat if it is left alone. And if you jump off the boat because of the chime, there is no way back up and you will die. Now, the Hypey has less than 8k HP on looking for raid difficulty, so it is very possible to one tap it or kill it in one to two globals, which you really want to do the moment it spawns. Now, this fight is a high DPS check. You cannot let the elemental hit 100% energy, and the more time you spend on one boat, the more energy he gets. But at the time, if you kill one of the mini bosses, he gets 5 energy per second, meaning you will have to kill the other mini boss very fast. So save all your CDs for the second boat, 
and kill the first boat as fast as possible using blood blast and drums as well as a battle potion for the first mini boss. As for beast master hunters you can also use beast drill wrath on the first boat because this is uh, less than one minute cd for you guys but if anyone else has like a minute cd don't use it here which means some classes that really rely on those cds like feral druids with convoke or arcane mages with arcane power and radiant spark are gonna have some problems with this fight. That all said, I would advise starting with the right boat, which is Brother Joseph, just to get the hypey out of the way first since it is the more mechanical boat. While you are on the boats, if the mini boss gains a shield and starts telling Stime's empowerment, deplete the shield immediately and interrupt as fast as you can. Now for the main boss, if you manage to somehow make all the DPS requirements, this part is rather simple. First you land and interrupt the boss, and if it gets the storm whale debuff onto you, you run away from the boss as fast as possible just as it's about to expire. You then kill the ad as it spawns. The reason why you don't want the ad near the boss is because it will channel into him and give him energy. This is the only way the boss gets energy during this section, and if the boss hits 100% energy, it is a wipe. Once the ads have died, you usually get another debuff right away, and sometimes you will get two debuffs. It's usually under 20% health when you get the second debuff on you. When you are out of melee range for the boss, he will do much more damage than normal. This is because every second you are away from the boss and he cannot melee you, you gain a debuff increasing frost damage taken stacking 100% each time. As for standing in the swirl AoEs, you can ignore them because if you stand in them, it just stops it from spawning pools. These pools really don't bother you during the fight. That is about it. Now we're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of frost. Because, 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 because of all the hateful things she does. Oh wait, that's Sylvanas. My bad. So anyways, for Jaina, I honestly don't know what to say here. It's so strange things happened. And I don't know if the fight was bugged for me, if it's because of shapeshift form or because we're higher level than the content. And that means we evade more things. Anyways, I'll, I'll try to go over it. So first phase, you just DPS her down, bring her near the catapults if you need to take the ships down to the sides. As for the bombs, they do very little damage, so you can ignore them. You will want to avoid the freezing blast since it will knock you off the boat. As for Ring of Ice, you want to get out of it because if you don't, you will be frozen. Melee will have a slightly harder time during this whole fight because Freezing Grass will root you in place for 7 seconds since you will move out of melee range. This happens in all phases except intermissions. As for the intermission and second phase, this is the... well, this is where things start to get buggy. You will want to jump off on the right side that is facing where Jaina first landed. After this, you want to hang a left while heading north until you find Jaina. Now melee you will have to interrupt that, you know, some some melees have to charge at the target to interrupt, such as Skull Bash. Usually this means you'd be stuck in an ice block. But this is where the unusual happens, as if you get hit by any of the circles that are meant to freeze you, and instead it spawns an invisible ice block and you're free to continue moving and you're not stuck. So anyways, after you interrupt, you can proceed the fight as normal, DPSing her down, avoid being touched by the beam. I assume the beam will still freeze you like it normally would. And take broadside to a barrel in order to clear chilling touch stacks. If chilling touch reaches 20 stacks and you go under 80% HP, you are frozen for 30 seconds. Though it is possible to survive this, it is not guaranteed, so I advise removing it. Also, it doesn't bug out like the other freezing mechanics. 
For the final phase, during the intermission, Jaina will be channeling Flash Freeze, expanding a circle of ice around her. You will need to kill the ice wall to the north of the room and feed the Thanos to end the intermission. Considering the frozen solid was working in the last phase, I assume getting touched by this ice probably would end the fight. So I did the unthinkable for these things and I, um... I avoided it completely and ran away to Daddy Nathanos. So anyways, head back to Jaina after freeing Nathanos and she will be at the far south wall. You want to interrupt the arcane barrage and the fight will continue normally. The tough part about this in the end is there is going to be no worry to clear the chilling touch stacks, meaning if you go under 80% HP, you're going to be frozen for 30 seconds and have no way out. But again, something strange happened here. When I went under 80%, the ice blocks started to spam spawn themselves, but did not freeze me or stun me, and again, had no model to them. So this fight became really easy because of these bugs, but at the same time I have to question, is it a bug or is it intentional? Honestly, I feel like one of the devs might have intentionally done this because it is extremely hard for Melee to solo this. If the intermission one throws you as you're interrupting her because the circles are spawning inside of her, so there's no way to avoid them for Melee. And as for phase three, you have no way to clear the stacks, meaning only intermission Two and phase two are within the player's controls to not get frozen. Which kind of lines up with the fact that you can be frozen in phase two. So if this is a bug, I say keep it the way it is. If it's not, good for them for thinking ahead of time because this was very easy fight because of that. Anyways, that is it for this one. I hope this was helpful. Honestly, I don't know if you guys were experienced the same bug I did or if it actually is intentional. That said, I'll probably be checking out the changes of the legacy raids on the PTI when they get around to adding them. I hope they will be including some more BFA content for legacy adjustments. So for those still around, I just want to say thank you for the support. I read the comments. I may not have reply all the time to them, but I do read them and I appreciate the suggestions, the questions and the positivity. So thank you. Also, I may be doing some non World of Warcraft gaming content sometime soon again, just to fill this void between these videos, because there's such a long time between these World of Warcraft videos, though I mean, I feel like I need to improve a lot on my non-scripted videos, which means they won't be the best of quality. They're, they're gonna be kind of shit, but you know, I don't, I don't feel like these scripted videos are the best either. I feel like I could do much better. Anyways. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.